Welcome to Fridays with Anne. This is a series of conversations with Belgian homeopath Anne Fafake about homeopathy. I will ask her curiously whatever confuses me in homeopathy, like case taking, case analysis, or theory in general. And Anne will answer according to her insights, experience, and most recent findings. You, the viewer, are invited to participate actively, so please feel free to send in comments and questions. And now today's episode of Fridays with Anne. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fridays with Anne. Hello, Anne. Hi, Ost. Today, I would like to speak about a group of remedies, or at least we treat them as a group yeah. in homeopathy. I'm talking about the drug remedies. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so I will jump right into the topic and ask you to circumscribe the, the group, first of all. What is, a, what is the drug remedy group? Uh -huh. Okay, that's uh, good to start with because we talked about trees and say actually it's not really a group eh? mm -hmm. and we cannot find common characteristics although some people think they do and with drugs we could have the same situation but I find if we can find group characteristics then we have a group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's as simple as that. So some people, yeah. I think we mentioned that Rose book on desert remedies. Yes. Living in Phoenix, in the desert, near to the desert, knowing the substances there and all the phenomena, he um, described minerals, animals, plants, and he found a common uh, group characteristic running mm -hmm. through these different remedies. I don't really see it, but for him it's a group. So yeah, he can call it a group. And I would say drugs to me is a group. <laughs> Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, we can work with that. Uh, yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. It doesn't have to be um, only a classification which occurs in other sciences, like biological classifications. Mm -mm. Um, right. But um, which remedies would then fall into this group? What makes a, a drug... Uh, what makes a remedy a drug remedy? Yes, that that's uh, the the basic thing. What what do you, what do you need uh, for a substance to belong to a group? How could you? Because they're very different kind of um, substances. We have a yeah. lot of plants. Most of them, I think, are plants. Now mm -hmm. we have some fungi, and we have some chemicals. We have chemicals right. made in mm -hmm. laboratories, and they also belong to the same drug-like group. So yes. they mm -hmm. they're not completely the same. They can be either extractions from um, plants, the alkaloids yeah. that, uh, that uh, cause the effect that, that one wants, right. eh? or they can be completely chemically constructed in a laboratory, have nothing to do with a, a natural substance. Yes. And I'm not an expert in those, so I can't say for the time being if there is a subgroup like the chemicals and the plant substance. Uh -huh. I don't know yet. Uh -huh. Could yes. be. So we will consider them all together now like one group, but maybe there are finer distinctions to be made in the in, in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not that I see those those remedies so often are not enough now uh, to to conclude to yes. yeah to 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 point to certain reliable differences yet. So we will do with the overall characteristics. I think that's safer for the moment. <laughs> yes, okay, all right. Yes, yeah, so um, r go right ahead and tell us please about the, the group char char characteristics yes. of the drug remedies. <laughs> yes, we always try to boil it down to one word. If there is one word, it would okay. be drugs, we would call it euphoria. That is euphoria. euphoria. I think that's the word that the patients will use most often. It's not a too far outward. It's not too uncommon. Mm -hmm. Yet it is like a, a strong feeling when you you can be happy, you can be contented, you can be satisfied. But when you're euphoric, yeah, that's a degree up. Yes. And uh -huh. except 
from people that use it all of the time yeah? but when it is uttered by somebody as the best word they could come up with to describe a feeling my mind would go to um to drugs or it can also be a result of questioning you say okay i i understand you like this a lot you it's it's one of your hobbies or your 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 preferred um uh, free time uh occupation how does yes. it make you feel and they will say i feel free and i feel happy and all that all common things and say yeah but i have the impression that you really really like it how does it make you feel <laughs> and then you can have the real description and then if it then goes to euphoria <laughs> Then you know yeah you're in drug land. It's a bit more than liking it, like you know, it's my hobby. It's more than that. Yeah. It's what I would call exaggerated, and that's also characteristics that a characteristic of drugs that everything is exaggerated. So if they're happy, they're too happy. Yes. Yeah. It's an exaggerated happiness. It's ecstasy. That's of course yeah. an even stronger word, and it's not by accident that you know a drug is called like that. Yes. <laughs> they're too happy. They're too daring. They're they're too elated. They're, they're too active. When they're active, they're too active. You know. Uh -huh. Because a lot of people will say, "Yeah, I'm active and I like it," but some people would go like, "I get my kicks out of you know going uphill, you know, as fast as I can," and, you know, and. If yes. then you ask them how it makes you feel, they say, ah, this is life, you know. Yeah. You go like, wow. Invigorating. <laughs> yeah, it sounds a bit more, you know, this elation is, it's like more than life. It's a real kick. It's a, it's a, they can call it adrenaline or whatever prescription, but it's, description, it's like too much. It's exaggerated. It's more than average. Yeah. If they have no fear, they, you know, the, 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 the coca, kind of remedies the what uh, cocaine is made of mm -hmm. when they have no fear they have no fear yeah of very yeah and then patients yeah it makes a lot of sense because the the drugs or many of them actually uh, alter our senses they heighten our senses they make yes. them more acute yeah. right they yeah. exaggerate our senses in they that exaggerate sense. exactly that's what i was going to they exaggerate also the way we what we see all of our senses, what we hear, what we smell, what we what we um, taste, um, touch, you know, and also yeah. our idea of ourselves, our energy can be, you know, your, your feeling of this, this bottomless, endless, you know, this have this bursting energy, you know, and same with fear, you know, I'm fearless, but not like, hmm, fears, no, not particularly. It's like, you will get the descriptions, especially when it's a plant, you will get the situation, uh, like I don't know a guy twice as big as as the your patient is you know threatening him he would go like go away <laughs> you know go out of my way you know not even blinking his eyes or doing sports that you know he's playing with his life basically but that's the yeah. way he likes it you know? <laughs> right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No fear I mean it's exaggerated yeah mm -hmm. dangerous situations now. Not even feeling it. It's not overcoming it. It's not even feeling it. Yeah. So it's too much courage. <laughs> it's yeah, and, and mm -hmm. I think this conveys it very well. The exaggeration and the kick. But yeah. I think everybody can relate to this uh, this uh, stereotype of someone someone wanting a kick. You know, yeah. of everyday experiences being too bland, too boring. Yeah. And exactly. That's the opposite. And it's more likely that your patient complains uh, of the flip side of that and the flip side is boring you know they're bored to death it's apathy it's lethargy it's uh passivity but that's uh, that's a, not a strong then it's not a strong impression to say how how bad the passivity is it could be as passive as not doing anything not for a day not for a week but never ever you know, you, you know this from cannabis. If there's something moving, it might be the the, the brain cells making air castles, but it's certainly not the body doing something. <laughs> this kind of passivity that's just sitting, sitting the day uh, away, the days of grace, it don't come to anything in mm -hmm. their life. So they might 
the rather complain of the flip side and of the upside, you know, of the, the good feeling of the, uh, the drug-like uh, remedies because they like it. That's their condition to be okay is to have these kicks, to have this um, euphoric feeling, this, this joy, this excitement, yeah? this intense pleasure. But who can do this all the time? I mean, <laughs> who can bear it? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I would also say that no, most people don't really seek that all the time. No, no. And for them, it's, if, it, if it's not that, it's the other side. Like in plants, we know. Eh? We, the condition to be okay is to have this, not to feel what is there as well. Yeah. And that's the other side, and that's the thing you want to avoid. And with drugs, it's, it's as extreme and exaggerated. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. It, it's not as this listless feeling that we all have every now and then it's this lethargy uh -huh. i can't move can't do anything everything is as you say bland boring you know, not worth breathing for you know <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and, and they will maybe complain and of course it makes them depressed they might come in and say, I feel depressed. And you think, yeah. oh, well, <laughs> there'll be something new. You know, all your patients will have and depression, if not the first thing, then the last thing they say. Yeah, I have this, that, that and depression. Eh? Yeah. So your drug patient might come in with the same complaint. You know, I have a pain here or I have some discomfort there in my body and feel depressed. And so far, you, you can't tell. It's by explaining more and more what he exactly means by it that it starts ringing a bell like this is over the top mm. yeah not in itself but everything is exaggerated if they're fearful it will be a horror and terror not just fear <laughs> either no fear or so fearful that uh, and i have cases like that like in codeine they don't dare to go to sleep uh -huh. because of their horrible nightmares yeah. We all have a nightmare now and then, but for them, it, they're so unbearable. They're so horrible. They don't even dare to go to sleep. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's it's a, a feeling of, of dying while you're alive. It's a feeling of getting out of your body and never be able to get in again. It's uh, and all kinds of horrors that you can imagine. You know, it's, it's a living hell. So when it's fear, it is again over the top when there are you know when they are suspicious mm -hmm. it's 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 paranoia yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah so it's this intense fear that everybody talks about them and and you know and and uh, they pursue them and and they try to harm them and and they don't dare to go out in the streets because of you know people looking at them listening whatever real paranoid feeling that is not just suspicion again this is yeah. exaggerated it's it's mm -hmm more than the little neurosis we all have. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, exaggeration in all aspects, in the positive and the negative. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there was euphoria, the seeking of, and the seeking of these, the seeking of that as well, I suppose, of euphoria, of extreme pleasure, Yes, the joy, the pleasure, the kick, whatever word they use, because it will also depend on the different um, um, drug substances. Yeah, 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 yeah. They make a difference. Uh, for instance, um, you know that cannabis um, and, and cannabis-like um, remedies will, um, dis um, how do you say, uh, provoke distortions. So they right, will yeah. they'll have distortions in their um, in their senses, what they yeah. see, or, or in colors, for instance, mm -hmm. or um, in distances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and that's not with all drugs. When we say like the coca-like drugs, they don't have this. They don't have mm -hmm. these distortions. Yeah. They have this super feeling. No, no appetite. Uh, endless uh, energy and 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 too bold and that's yeah. their, uh -huh. that's their kick you know <laughs> the superman feeling yeah <laughs> well cannabis like drugs or lsd for instance is a whole other um 
uh, idea of, of distortion they have yeah. but they can be pleasant can be also euphoric to see the beauty and the flower you know and then they really exaggerate <laughs> when they this it's almost a dreamy like state state yeah. Yeah, 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 you yeah. can keep this also in the back of your mind. It's a bit dreamlike. It's not real. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. out of reality. Not because they see something different, but they see it differently. What they see is the flower. You see the flower. They see the flower, but they see the flower with other colors or more intense or with another yes. size or or in mm -hmm. distorted. You know, so it's not a, a complete hallucination, but it's. Mm. It's a hallucination of what there is. It's an augmented reality, so to Yeah, say. it's mm -hmm. a different reality. Yeah. Of course, we know that drugs sometimes were taken for this reason. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> often. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and before I move on to the comparisons that uh, occur to me, is, are there other group themes that we can identify? Um, I think we have the most important, let me think about it, um, the distortions, that was another thing. I think that the distortions also in size, shouldn't forget that yeah. we have these fungi symptoms of, um, that they feel um, enlarged. Yes. Also the cactus, cactus, uh, cactacea, we have the peyote there, mm -hmm. um, uh, has this feeling of distances. Mm -hmm. and of enlarged the mm -hmm. distances are not measured precisely and they feel either enormously enlarged or body parts enlarged mm -hmm. or very 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 small yes can be mm -hmm. either one yeah. so there is also a distortion or a wrong uh, um, measurement um, a wrong experience uh, yes of mm -hmm. um, of size of False distance perception. yeah mm -hmm. perception in general yes Right. Okay. That was what Again, I was an aspect where the senses are, where the senses are affected. Yeah. 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 Okay. And now, like you speak of this, like you know, make the parallel with the cactaceae. I also had uh, associations with the uh, uh, piperaceae, or um, a bit like rubiaceae, other plant families where. You have or the, the Hamamelidae, mm -hmm. um, other plant families where we have in the sensation this aspect of maybe boredom or um, this on the other side on this freedom or of uh, euphoria and seeking of pleasure and uh, yes. So how do you distinguish that? How do you differentiate the groups? and? then in a more general sense how do you apply the 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 use of this drug group in practice mm -hmm. i see so within the drug drug group we have different um families like you said yeah the papaveresi or uh, the tiales or whatever and then you mentioned a group like the rubiaceae that is a bit out of the drug remedies but it's let's say borderline right because yeah <laughs> we wouldn't consider coffee a drug no we no, don't we don't but in, a, in a, it's you could say it's very soft eh? it's a very mild yeah drug like it's the same with guarana it's a family member and it has this it's maybe like a mild drug because it's yeah. it, it is somehow affecting your your perception as well just like um, nicotine or like uh, tea or like uh, um, c uh, cacao yeah but not as in uh, hashish or as in uh, LSD or something like this no and especially in the Rubiaceae we can understand that the how to say the confusion can be there because they will also have as a condition to be okay to have this excitement yeah mm -hmm, to have this um, change eh? because otherwise they feel bored mm -hmm. <laughs> they easily feel bored when there's a routine and it's always yeah. the same thing and they like to have fun so they like to be social be with friends have these stimulating uh, talks because that's yeah. why they want to be with friends 
it's mm -hmm. not for safety and all that. They want to be with friends to have like a stimulating conversation, like mm -hmm. exchange of, of exciting ideas. Yeah. That's the main thing. So these exciting ideas, this rush in, in their in their mind yeah. of um, new things and exciting things and that's coffee like eh? but they don't have this euphoria it doesn't go that far they don't have this exaggeration it's all more between let's say the boundaries of the normal hmm? yeah yeah it's it's active but it's not it's not you know the, the marathon like Yes. Yes. <laughs> In order to feel okay, I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see. Yeah. It's it's uh, more than average, mm. but it is not. It doesn't have this strong exaggeration. No. No. And the basic thing is whether they're coffee drinkers or not, because that doesn't make no. uh, any difference. It's always an as if situation, yeah. always yeah. an as if prescription. Uh, what they like is. As if a person under coffee, <laughs> under the influence yeah. of coffee. That's yeah, what yeah. I like. But if you meet somebody who's under the influence of coffee, you won't see anything particular in his behavior. No, no. no. Because most of the people are under the influence of coffee. <laughs> most of the time, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And if they're not used to it, they might talk a little bit faster than they used to. Mm -hmm. Or they probably will have to go to the toilet if they're not used to it. <laughs> God bless. Uh -huh. yeah. Because it's mainly the physical uh, reaction on caffeine that makes the peristaltic movements in their guts a bit quicker, yeah. their heart rate goes up a little bit. But the, their behavior won't be very weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. So they will behave kind of normal. Their body will feel it. If they're not used to it, they probably won't like it. Because they will feel nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And so, mm -hmm. so it, it is the stimulation of your your brain activity, your ideas, your your the, yeah the what to say the activity, the brain activity, the mind activity will make yeah. you think of those of that family. But that's basically the only uh, overlap. So you will yeah. miss in the Rubiesche cases all the other things of euphoria, yes, yes. Of, of exaggeration, of even of lethargy. Of, and if you miss it and you only have one word like joy, for instance, yeah. because joy is the key word for the Rubiesche, yeah. eh? but you also have it in a few other families that they will, plant families that they will use joy. Eh? Eh? Because we said it before, the, the common thing in all those plant families is they the basic experience, the vital experience, is expressed in very daily words. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And it's, therefore, it sounds like very common human experiences, yeah. which mm -hmm. is true. But they have one specific one that is their condition to be okay. Mm. Yeah. But that should be different in the drug expressions, right? Yes. Not so common experiences. They will have the, the common experience of the plants, Mm -hmm. For instance, you, you mentioned the Papa Avarishi, they will have pain because yeah. it, it's a common theme in the plant. It's the pain, it's the torture. Yeah? Yeah. Plus the drug qualities, if you need opium, heroin, morphine, all those remedies yeah? in that family will have the drug like qualities, not the others. We have a lot of Papa Avarishi that are not drugs and yeah. they will have the pain issue and the torture issue and the cruelty. But mm -hmm. not the drug like qualities. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Great. So, um, right. So that was the differentiation to other, to milder substances, so to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what now? Another thing that interests me is. We have, for example, with the Loganaceae, we have Nux vomica and we have mm -hmm. Iglesia, and then we have Strychnine, yeah. or we have uh, Opium, and I don't know another example, but there is Morphine as a okay. substance, mm -hmm. and the same goes for Belladonna and Stramonium and Hyacinthus 
and we have at atropine as a substance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would they also, would you count them as drug remedies, atropine, morphine, codeine, these substances? Well, in the case of, of morphine, for sure. In the case of atropine, no. Mm. Because what atropine does is, you know, it's, um, well, that's a physical <laughs> uh, uh, characteristic. It, it yeah. opens your pupil and uh, it's used for um, eye uh, surgery. Yeah, and the image, the um, homeopathic image, basically, it's almost like the whole picture of the Loganesie. It's like one thing is cut out of it. It's it's very strange. It's not Loganesie, it's Solanesie. Sorry, it's like one thing is cut out of it. One one aspect, and I think with um, how do you say alkaloids that are derived from a whole synergy of uh, substances in a plant okay. that you kind of emphasize like one characteristic uh -huh. strangely enough yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. and okay. and then the whole picture will be like a narrowed down mm -hmm. picture of the plant family but that one aspect will be very 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 strong yes yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's like you 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 focus it down like it's almost like a laser beam you know you you laser only this aspect right and okay. and the whole case will like revolve around it and then you will start to doubt this is a plant case because you know you miss a little bit of the diversity and the yeah. what we said before the many 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 yeah. It, yeah. it always seems to come down to the same feeling but the same feeling in all yeah. kind of different situations yeah. But just like just one, it could be extreme fear, for instance, in a, partic in a particular situation, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. or like you, something will happen, something like that, and they cannot say catastrophe, but it could <laughs> could as well be catastrophe, right? Yeah. And would you, uh, on a side note, would you still consider them plant remedies? That's hard to say, because there is so like, like Hardeman said, we have these uh, one-sided cases, mm -hmm. you could almost say it's like these one-sided remedies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> almost like that. Yeah. And a one-sided case still is a person. Mm -hmm. It's a whole person, a whole patient with all attributes that everybody has, but it's like single focus. And with mm -hmm. these remedies, it's a bit like that as well. Yeah. I, you, maybe you read the Morphinum case, there's a Morphinum case, um, I think it's published in one of the first books, if not in the Charm of Homeopathy, then in the Postgraduate Annual of a two-year-old girl, and she got morphine. And the, it was a very. I strange. read it, but I forgot. You, you got, yeah, it's it was like a very vigorous girl. She was an adopted child, and um, and the, the mother who came with her, the ad adoption mother, who took very well care for the for the girl, for the little one. She had two adopted children, and this was the small one. And, you know, she was very patient with her, and it was like this strong, vigorous child, you know. And she was not two, she probably was three or four already, because she went to kindergarten, and what she used to do was, you know, she would run to the children and then squeeze them so hard that the children would scream. Uh -huh. And, of course, everybody said, you, you mustn't hurt the babies. You mustn't hurt the children. That's the title of the of the case, by the way. I mustn't hurt the babies. So she hears this from as as soon as she could hear and talk. Mm. The little one. Everybody always say you mustn't hurt the babies. You mustn't hurt the children. And yet she still does it. Uh -huh. So she comes like very with the very strong arms. She hugs the child and then she like squeezes it. <laughs> And she always does until the children start to scream. So okay. on the playground, children all run away when she comes. Yeah. <laughs> because they know what she'll do. And at the same time, the mother said, it's strange because she's so sensitive to pain. Yeah. If we meet somebody on the street, for instance, with a broken leg or whatever, she's completely upset. If an animal uh -huh. has something, she's totally upset for days. Mm -hmm. And she always okay. asks me, is it in pain? Does it feel pain? And that was the whole case. Yeah. So it was inflicting pain or being upset by pain. Even in her sleep, she said, in her cradle, where she had this, uh, um, uh, you know, this instrument that the mother could hear her. Yeah. Yeah. 
she heard the child say, I mustn't hurt the babies, I mustn't hurt the babies. <laughs> she knew, she should. It, yeah. it was very strange. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like this whole Papa Valencia team, like narrowed down to hurting, inflicting yeah. pain, yeah. or sensitive to pain. It was all only yeah. this. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was all. <laughs> Right. Okay. So to resume. Um, oh, I have one more thing. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> one more differential diagnosis. It might sound a bit odd, but I found lately, let's say the last years in fish cases. We didn't talk about fish yet. No. So one day we'll talk about fish. In yes. fish cases, this exaggeration is somehow is there as well. I mean, uh -huh. they have some kind of exaggeration in their feeling and in their expression, but it's by no means so much exaggerated, exaggerated as in drugs. But they do have this a little bit over the top feelings or over the top expressions in fish. Not all fish, uh, because there are many different kinds of fish. But in some fish, I was surprised to find it that we asked ourselves or students ask themselves, is there a drug or what is this? Because fish are not very well known, and if they're not, uh, um, yeah. yeah, if they're not predators, then you don't recognize or you don't have the violence and all that. Yeah. So you don't know which kingdom you're in, and the exaggeration might make your mind go to drugs while they're not. There's yeah. also a fish quality of which, and it's not really a fish, I know, but um, what do you call it? The seahorse? Yeah, has real drug qualities, and sometimes we say the seahorse is a drug among the fish. <laughs> the drugs in the sea. <laughs> yeah, that's a kind of sea creature with drug-like qualities. All right. It was okay. just an addition, a little. Yeah, yeah thanks for this. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so summarizing, we talked about whether drugs, uh, as a group, are a group, and they are. <laughs> for us and uh, what substances belong to it, what are the main characteristics of the group, uh, how to differentiate with other plant families or with plant families in general and now even with fish <laughs> and, uh, remedies. And then what about what I would say are like extraction of, sub of plants or substances like um, mm -hmm. atropine Mm -hmm. uh, in comparison to belladonna or morphine as mm -hmm. opposed to opium and so on. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, I already have a topic in mind for next time. Um, it will be a more philosophical one again. Okay. So we keep, <laughs> it, we keep it varied. Yeah, well, we like that, huh? philosophical yes. topics. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much for this one, Anna. I look okay. forward to, to the mix. Yeah, see you next week. Mm -hmm. See you then. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, bye yours. <laughs>